Good day, everybody. My name is Bobby Salveson, and uh, once again, I am going to be doing a small tutorial on how to do vectorizing of artwork. Uh, a lot of times, you're going to get artwork from a uh, customer, or uh, you're going to procure this uh, artwork from whatever means that we may be necessary. So we're going to go through that stuff in here. But um, why am I doing this? Uh, because when I joined, when I became a uh, an engraver, uh, I was self-taught, and um, there wasn't very much information on this in the first place. So um, I'm going to show you the tips and techniques that I use to uh, make artwork for my engraving business. Uh, I am more about efficiency, and efficiency means being able to do these tasks quickly to make more money. The quicker I can do them the faster I can make more money. So I like to move along quick, pretty quickly. Uh, right now I'm going to be using Corel X7, Corel Draw X7. But um, all of these techniques can be used back to X3. Uh, I started in X3 and I've moved along through these up to X7. So the techniques I'm going to be using should be able to be used throughout um, all the Corel Draws. You might have to search around a little bit but for the most part, I could probably tell you where they are on the fly. So first thing in, uh, in logos is to get good logos. What we always ask these uh, the customers to give us is camera-ready artwork. What that means to you as the engraver is that you want something that looks like a kid's coloring book. Black and white, solid line drawings. If they cannot give this to you, then you insist on it. Um, trust me, get this out front because if they give you, um, let's say camera ready artwork, you might give them a price of X. And if they give you something that's, uh, you know, they, they download off the internet, that may be pricing Y. If they give you a business card that's been in their wallet for the next 25 years and it's all bled out and all crappy, then that is going to be <laughs> pricing Z and pricing Z is very expensive. I usually really really out price uh, those types of things where I price it out where I'm going to be making money on this and it's going to cost you and most of the time customers will default back to no I'll find something else for you because the cost is just exorbitant so uh, make sure that you out price this so that they do not want to give you that type of uh, artwork so the settings that you're going to be using in this workspace are um, established and if you look in the previous uh, tutorials you're gonna see how I set up to this point but for the most part we're gonna be going through this and setting this up as we go so we're gonna start right off with a fresh space um, here it is it's a sheet of paper which doesn't really matter let's just make this uh, six inches by six inches here we are and we're gonna hit shift F4 to go right into that zoom uh, to that page so now Let's start with uh, getting something off the internet. We need a basic logo. Let's say uh, forks and spoons. I'm, I'm making up something, but we want that, and we're going to see how to do that on Google. So uh, I'm going to drag in a brand new Google space, and here we are, and I'm going to say fork and spoon. Okay, here's the trick. Go to Images. And now we're going to change a couple of search tool settings. So this is what I want to do. I want to go to Search Tools. I want to find nice big ones. So if I can go to Large, that's great. But specifically for engraving, we want black and white. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change this over to Clip Art. Now, again, you might have to change these parameters to find the one you want. But I also want black and white. So this is going to kind of bring it down to where I want. Now here's a whole bunch of forks and spoons and you'll notice that some of them have clip art uh, logos that are embedded inside of that. Those ones are not going to be very good for us in the engraving world because we're going to have to either edit them out or buy them which is fine but a lot of these things here are going to be something that we can utilize for basically free which is what I want to do quickly. So let's find something that's a little more complex because uh, the easy ones are very easy. So let's find, see this one is not good because it has gray. Gray scale is not going to translate well to engraving. 
So I want to kind of keep, so, oh, this looks good. Notice that it's 380 by 400. Mm, that sounds good. Let's try that out. Oh, that has that logo across. So we're going to get back to it by finding that little nib. And we're going to clip back and go back to where we are. This looks pretty good. Okay, we found ours. It's not great, but we're going to hit view image. Don't hit view page, hit view image. And there it is on our website. So on our screen, we're going to right click, save image as, and we're going to save it, let's say to the desktop as that GIF file. And there it is on the downloaded. Go back to our Corel drawer. We're going to import, which is control I, and we're going to go out and find that logo desktop find that logo and now you can sit here and click and drag it out or you can just hit the space bar and they'll put up at full resolution at full size where it is now that does not look very sexy but we're going to fix that so when we have this thing we have two different things going on here we have raster and we have vector a vector is a set of points like um an end point to an end point, and it's very simplistic uh, artwork. Raster is a point of pixels. So if I hit F2 and I zoom in real close to this, you're going to see all these grays and uh, different shades of grays and blacks and whites and stuff like that. That is not what we want in engraving. Can you get away with it? Yes, but it is not something good. You will never get a good uh, engraving on this one. So we're going to back back out, uh, Shift F4. And now we're going to transfer this to a line drawing. So first step I'm going to have to do, I have to change this to a fully black and white drawing so the computer can do this. So I go to bitmaps, and this is, again, in any Corel drawer, and uh, go to mode, black and white. Now, we have halftones, and we have line art. We want to change this to line art. You notice how this changed a little bit, but it's not great. You can move this, and you can see how it gets thicker and black, or we can move it back this way and get thinner. Sometimes you got to play with this to find the spot where you like it, and yeah, that looks good. Hit OK. Not much has changed, but if I zoom back in on that same spot, you notice how there's no more gray in there. That's what we want. So I go back out. I'm going to go to Trace, Bitmap, Outline, Trace. To be honest with you, any one of these things is going to work because we're going to tweak it. But if you kind of know what you're going to be doing, go to it because it's a presetting and we can just adjust it from there. And I'll be honest with you, 99% of the time, I just pick one and then I adjust it from there. So we'll say this is clip art. I'm just picking one. It doesn't really matter. Oh, look at that. It looked lots, lots better. Now, it's not great, but it's good. Now, we're only doing a black and white rendering, and in a future episode, we'll do colors and stuff like that and how to combine colors. But we have some things that here that aren't so great. So I can increase the detail, and I get some details back. I can change the smoothing, which is how smooth these edges are, and you see how it didn't go so well. So I'm going to back it off a little bit and see how that looks, maybe a little more. Okay, it looks good. Corner smoothness is how rough the edges are um, we can delete the background image which I kind of recommend if you do that uh, if you don't oh, I, you know what if we don't do that I'm going to show you what it, what happens but let's go leave this off just for the uh, sake of this uh, tutorial and once I get this to the point where I like it uh, I leave this as before and after because I like to see the left and the right and you notice all these uh, checkerboards are here which means that the background white has been cut out on this one the white is actually still there, and when you look at this thing, if you would try to overlay it on color, you know, let's do that real quick. Um, just quick trick. I want to put a box around the outside of this square. I double click on the X, and then I'm just going to drop it color in there. Oh, look at that. There's white all around this thing. I don't want that. So let's leave it like that just for the sake of the argument, and we're going to trace the bitmap again. We're going to go back into that in the clip art. And there it is with these little checkerboards, which means it's going to cut the white out. I'm going to OK it because that's pretty much where we were. Now, you don't see any difference because the underlying was still there. I click on the underlying and delete that. Take this, hit P, moves it back in the middle, and there we are. 
okay now if we're on a white background which is what we're really going to be doing the white doesn't matter like that but let's say I'm going to control Z and go back to where we were let's say I wanted the red to come through these uh, things here and this is again a little bit more advanced but we're going to get into this in a future episode is that we're going to take these objects ungroup them and then we're going to combine them and now oh my god what happened here we have all types of problems what we have is a combined group of those things now all the white became black but all the information is still there so sometimes I'll do this so that I can kind of group it all together but it be, it gets a little confusing but this is how you get really good artwork I'm gonna break it now doesn't change but you see on here I get a whole bunch of different curves now again this is in the object manager and if you don't have the object manager you can find it under tools in the older versions it's right here in here I think it's object object manager so here's how I'm going to see how they are. I'm going to I'm going to highlight all of it. I'm going to go over to my black and I'm going to right click, which means outline it. And then I'm going to go up to the nothing. It means basically don't fill it at all and left click on it. So now I can see all those lines. So I can take these lines and change them. So like the inside one, I'm going to delete this thing back here. I can take the middle one and make it orange. I can make this purple. I can make this. You, you see where I'm going with this, right? And I can change things and make things colorized if I want. Now, I'm going to go backwards. Quite a few undos. There we are. Okay, so I'm back to my group. Here we are with our engraving. And now it doesn't really matter if I change the size of it because it's a vector art. So I can make this thing and it's going to hold the same resolution even if I'm down really small or let's go back out and let's zoom out F3, F3, F3 and I zoom out a ton. Now this thing is uh, 24 inches wide by 40 inches high. Let's see the resolution once more. Same thing. So vector art is going to allow you to, oh boy, is going to allow you to um, change the resolution very quickly. Okay, so that's one way of doing uh, just camera ready over Google. Now let's say we have um, something that somebody gave to you. All right, so one of the things that you're going to get is maybe like a patch. So uh, here it is, Bayonne uh, Fire Department. Uh, just, I just threw this patch up there on the side while I was uh, pausing for a moment. And uh, here it is. And you can see that there's stitch work in here. And this is not easy stuff to do. I, I really kind of move away from these things. So I'm going to save the image once more. And we're going to go back into Corel. And we're going to try to import a brand new patch. Where is it, Bayonne? There you go. Hit the space bar once again, and there it is. Now this can get messy, okay, because the resolution, first off, is terrible. And if I zoom in real close, you're going to see how pixelated this is. And this is not going to translate well to a logo. So in some cases, and I'm going to say more often than not, I will choose to um, create this again. I have a, a, a bunch of templates that I will have uh, on hand and I will have the Maltese, I will have the hydrants and ladders and I will just basically insert these things, recreate the, uh, the, the um, text, put a little arching in it, and again in, in a future episode I'll do this again where we actually recreate a patch with some templates or a uh, badge or whatever uh, to make this happen. But this one, let's just go through the whole artwork process, but let's convert this over to Oh no, it's not there. So how do, why isn't this happening? Because we don't have the artwork selected. Click on the artwork. You see these boxes come around it. Bitmap, mode, select. Oh, look at this. You see all this noise in here? No good. Now if I want to zoom in, I click on this one and I click left to zoom in, right to zoom out. OK, 
Okay, we're going to come in a little bit closer. I'm not going to slide it around. And we're going to move these things around a little. Oop, that's too much. That's terrible. <laughs> but that's what they gave me. So in this technique, we're going to do it like this. And we're going to go to clip mark because it's going to change it. Let's see what happens. And you see how all these this artifact comes into this thing. And it's almost maxed out of detail. So there's really not much I can do with this. Um, that's about it. <laughs> you know, you can sit there and you can play with this thing for hours and hours and see what happens. But in some cases, it's just going to be that you have to rebuild this thing because the text and everything is not going to be very crisp. You may be able to get uh, get away with this thing on a, let's say, a plaque that's like um, smaller where the logo is going to be one or two inches. And this may be presentable, but when you have this thing at two and a half, three inches, four inches or something like that, you're going to have big problems. So uh, once again, I can't emphasize enough, ask for better artwork. It will make a big difference in what you do. Uh, your quality, your uh, logo work will have a direct impact on your business. And if you put out good information, good logos, they will keep coming back to you. Uh, if you put out basically crap like this, uh, they will not be coming back to you. So in a future episode, probably in a ne another day or two, I will do another uh, episode where I will do uh, a rebuild of a, pla uh, a patch. Um, if you need a template or something like that, you can email me directly. And my, my email address is yakshave, it's Y-A-K-S-H-A-V-E at gmail.com. And if I can help you, I will, but uh, I can't guarantee you. Um, most of my logos and stuff that I've done, I have thousands, if not tens of thousands of logos that I can extract and give you what you need. But um, I took time to do these things, so I might have to charge a little more money for these things. Um, so why do we vectorize things? Again, to uh, be able to expand and contract these things to a point where we want them on all plaques. Um, why don't we use raster, raster artwork versus uh, vector? Because of that same pixelation that we saw early in this technique. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, when I zoom in, you see these little nibs that come off this thing. It's because of that raster. So if I take this thing and I move it off, you can see the difference between the raster over here and the vector over here. Uh, the colors also get a lot better. And this allows us to move around a lot more stuff here. So in closing, um, just keep your head up with this stuff. It is not very easy stuff to do. I do have techniques, and this is a less than 20-minute tutorial on what logos are to do. Um, in the future, I will be breaking down on how exactly I do all my logos, uh, how to break them out into uh, usable engraving uh, logos that you can use over and over and over, even if it's just the parts, like the outside Maltese and just dump the uh, the middles. So if I wanted to take this, let's just dump this thing. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Let's move this back in the middle with a P, ungroup it, and let's say I want to make this a template. I take all of these parts out of here. You see what I'm saying here? And you can, I would basically just empty this whole area out, and then I would have a template of just a Maltese with the hydrant and a ladder. Of course, not at this resolution, but a much better resolution and then we could work with that and put in whatever you want we can add in other drops in the middle like a five horn chief um whatever detective things uh state logos you name it we can do it and uh make something that the customer wants because that's what it basically comes down to so if you enjoy this um tutorial please leave a comment at the bottom and uh, i'll be out there again uh giving you more thank you very much